Okay, welcome back to the next part of the video. This is uh, part two of the Orbiter 2010 challenge number four. In the last video, we spent the whole video just setting up the maneuver that has to be done in order to basically get our vessel on a trajectory that will go out toward the moon. Then the moon's gravity will pull on our vessel and it will lower one side of our orbit enough that we can get down get down into the Earth's atmosphere and actually uh, slow down and then land. Because with this particular challenge, the Delta V is so low that you actually can't just do a direct retrograde burn and go back to Earth. It doesn't work that way. So we got everything set up in the last video. And while I was in between videos, I did spend just a few more seconds, maybe another minute, uh, tweaking the plan here a little bit to get the relative inclination really low and then a perfect PE ratio. So we're ready to do the burn. Let's go ahead and do that now. Let's go to view target. And again, we gonna want to be really careful with our RCS thrust. So we're not going to, you know, just lazily, you know, hit prograde or anything like that. We want to be very careful with how we do this. So let's uh, go a little bit this way. And a little bit that way. And we've got plenty of time here for this. So there we go. Now we need to go, let's see, prograde's going to be to my right. Yep. And I went the wrong way with it. So just being very careful here, tapping, you know, rotation one time and then just letting, uh, letting time pass. And we'll even use, you know, 10x if we have to, but we won't have to in this case. Okay, we're pretty well lined up. I'm going to go ahead and go with that. I'm going to warp time forward, get down to maybe 200 seconds to begin the burn. And then we'll do a couple things. Set up a burn time calculator. And we'll also do an update just to make sure. Now, again, it would be ideal at this point when you're, you know, at that less than a thousand seconds from the time to begin the burn, if you would set up a IMFD um, delta V and then map, you know, use those, because then you would have a more accurate burn. I, I am learning uh, IMFD, but I'm still not familiar enough with it to be comfortable. So we'll go ahead and do just this with transects. Although we will use the map on IMFD when we get out to Apoapsis. But for now, let's um, press the right buttons. Let's go to VW here uh, to maneuver and do an update just to keep everything nice and current before we do the burn. And let's bring up burn time calculator over here. And we're going to do a manual burn. And we're going to do 1,075 meters a second. Okay, and now I'm just going to wait for the time to get to the beginning of the burn here. Okay, we're almost there. Let's go back to real time and let's just touch up that green X ever so slightly. Uh, should have left well enough alone. All right, we'll go with that. Getting ready to burn in three, two, one, and burning. This will take care of itself, so let's not really worry about that. Bring up orbit MFD so we can see exactly what's happening. You can see the moon's over here, and we are on this part of the Earth, this side of the Earth over here. So we're extending our orbit out, you know, somewhere out this way. Let's go ahead and watch our green X over here just to make sure that we keep everything centered throughout the end of the burn. Okay, go with that. And VW over to maneuver like always. Turn maneuver mode off. And what we want to see is our focus PED is 8809 and I also want to see 
how well my P ratio and relative inclination are. Translation. And we'll try to touch that up with a little bit of translation. And I would say that's going to be pretty good right there. All right, now really all we have to do is warp time forward out to Apoapsis. So let's go ahead and do that. And if we watch our PEA here, as we get way out here and the moon starts coming around, you should see that the PEA will start coming down. Okay, let me go ahead and do that now. Let's warp time forward. PA is starting to come down, but I'm not too sure what that necessarily means at this point because the moon certainly isn't close enough to cause any influence on our vessel. Watching the apoapsis, time to the apoapsis rather. And now the moon's kind of getting kind of close, still out there a ways. We are getting up to Apoapsis. Let's get ready to go back to real time. And we're almost there. All right, back to real time. Now let's bring up interplanetary MFD on this side and see what it says our PEA at Earth will be. It says it's going to be uh, 6,000. That's why, again, for transact's sake, I always want to see a focus PED that is at least at the surface, preferably below. But I was beginning to have a little bit of problems getting it down there low enough. So we know that this is pretty accurate, but let's make sure everything is correct here. Targeting the Earth, yes. Okay, so the only thing that we can really do here to improve our situation is to uh, do a little bit of a retrograde burn here at Apoapsis to pull in our PEA a bit more. Rotation. So let's get rotated for that carefully, not to waste any fuel, because the RCS is very, very thin on this challenge. Okay, and actually what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring up interplanetary on this side. I'm going to share side zero, which is the left side. Bring up map over here, and we're going to bring up the delta V program on this side instead. Now I'm going to turn off auto zoom, turn on display, select, or rather page, turn on the plan, turn on the SOI zoom out a bit where we can actually see something useful. I guess that's about as much as we're going to see here. Okay, now what if we put in some negative prograde? How much are we going to have to put in to bring our PEA down to 65 kilometers? an adjustment to bring that up now. Do an adjustment here. Let's actually see now time. How far are we away from Apoapsis? So 100 seconds. So let's set 100. And 
and it's saying we need 114. Let's make sure that we actually have that much still to do. Yeah, we still have enough DV. Okay, so... Now we need just a little bit, a little bit lower than that even, not much, but a little bit. Uh, yeah, I bet that's good enough. Okay, now let's auto burn, page over. That's actually wasting a lot of fuel, I should have oriented it myself. But we still got the DV for it at this point. All right, let's warp time forward to get over or to get down to the time to do the burn here. We'll let obviously we're going to let interplanetary take care of that for us. And there we have it. So now let us bring up burn time calculator and put in the exact amount of RCS that we've got left, which is 29.13. So we have 208, we have 208 meters per second left, and we're done. We don't have to do any more burns from this point. So we have 27 plus 29 left. So I'll have to figure out, I forget how much this scenario starts with. Okay, now the landing, I'm really debating if I want to record the whole landing or not, because the landing is going to obviously take probably an hour but let's bring up Orbit MFD so we can see how things look. And map. And where are we at in our orbit? Well, let's get closer to Earth first. So let's warp time forward carefully. We're still out quite a way, but you know, we don't want to mess things up. And actually, let me also have map up on the side just to make sure that our PEA isn't badly influenced one way or the other. Looks like we could have gotten away with the like more like 70 kilometers because it's kind of coming down a bit. Uh, we don't need to target the moon anymore. Okay, let's warp time out. Yeah, we could have used a little bit less DV. Okay, coming up to periapsis in 10,000 seconds. And here we are, home sweet home. In the interest of saving fuel, we will not use the rotation thrusters to orient the vessel. Just kind of let the atmosphere handle that part for us. Okay, now let's bring up surface on this side, map on this side, display, orbit plane, target. Uh, where do we want to land? I guess KSC, so we'll have to go all the way around. Let me pull my joystick over here. Be careful not to engage the engines with it. And turn on surface controls. Attitude off. They're already on. Okay, now. I probably will fly this for a little bit and then stop the video at some point, complete the majority of the long glide over to KSC off camera, and then come back. Or maybe maybe I'll just record it as a separate part, and then if you don't want to watch that, you can skip that video, and then I'll just record the landing stuff as a separate video. You know, I, I never really know who wants to watch every aspect of the flight and who doesn't. Um, but the, the thing if the thing is if I record all of it then people can decide whereas if I don't record all of it Then the people that actually wanted to see everything can't see it so it's it's always a bit of a something I have to figure out 
actually, I think I'll land at Carl Sagan Space Center. It's over here. That'll be a little faster than KSC. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so we're getting down. We're at 280 kilometers. Still need to go forward a bit more. Or I'll be able to, you know, control the vessel. Okay, we should be getting some atmospheric control here shortly. So immediately I'm going to roll inverted. That way we can control the vertical aspect, the vertical speed, so we don't skip out of the atmosphere. That would be bad news. Taking out some of that roll. Yeah, the other nice thing about Carl Sagan Space Center is I'm actually on track for it, so I don't have to really do any cross range. Not that that much matters because we have a ton of cross range. I'm actually going to roll heads up because we are all the way down to 70 kilometers already. I want to get rid of that vertical speed. Just be careful with it. Got to roll back over here pretty quickly. Throw out the air brake. Okay, now immediately roll over because we're getting close to zero on the vertical speed. And pull back in a little bit, not too much, but we have a positive vertical speed now, so we'll actually bounce out if we're not careful. But we can get up a little higher than this. We're at uh, 66 kilometers, and at this velocity, we can afford to be at 70. Actually, I'm going to land at KSC now that I think about it. This challenge is set up to land at KSC. That's why it says my distance to target is 10,000 kilometers. Okay, so let me change that here. Target KSC which is a shortcut that I set up, by the way. In Orbiter 2010, by default, you can't just put in a target of KSC. It's not a valid base. But I created an empty base over top of uh, Cape Canaveral. That way I could actually use that shortcut of KSC. It's actually a little trick that uh, LaRue told me about. Basically, you just make a copy of the Cape Canaveral, or actually it's just called canaveral.cfg. And then uh, just call, I called mine Canaveral underscore KSC. And then you delete all the object info out of it and just have just the base name of uh, KSC and the VOR. That's all you need is the VOR and the base name. All right, now while I'm doing this, let me bring up Base Sync over here. And let's target KSC. Number of orbits. One, we want to land immediately. And we got to slow down a bit before we'll have any usable information in base sync. So I'm not actually sure if I'm pitching the right way, if I should be pitching... I guess I should say banking. I don't know if I should be banking the other way or not. I think I'm banking the right way find out. We've got a ton of cross range and a lot of time, so it's no big deal. We'll close the air brake for now, though, because we want to glide for a while at this high velocity. That way we can get all the way around the globe much faster.
allowing the vessel to climb out into space a little bit. Uh, when I do the KSC to wide awake speed run, I can be up at around 72 kilometers. So coming back from the moon at a much lower velocity here of 9,700 meters per second, we can afford to stay up a bit higher for a while. And we, and we want to because we've still got to go more than halfway around. So we want to hold on to as much of this velocity as we can. Uh, well, I don't want to roll over that much. That's that's not good. I may have just got myself in trouble because now I'm not. Now I'm at 71 kilometers, and I've got vertical speed going out the wrong way. Looks like we'll be okay. Pulling back in. That was pretty close, though. That's about as close as you want to cut it. And there's no center of gravity shift here in the standard delta glider to help me keep good control. So I have to basically, you know, babysit a lot. Matter of fact, now that I think about it, I really shouldn't have thrown out that air brake as soon as I did. Because I just bled off velocity unnecessarily. Considering how far yet we still have to go. Okay, go ahead and throw in the elevator trim all the way up. That way I don't have to put as much pressure on the joystick. And we have, you know, 3,600 kilometers off base distance. So let's start working on that. Not real sure which way I need to bank, though. If I need to bank right or left. So for now the distance off base is coming down. So I'll just kind of keep this attitude. Yeah, and I'll go ahead and record this a little bit more, you know, get it out closer to 30 minutes on the video time. And then I probably I don't know. I don't think I really want to record the whole glide over to KSC. I mean, well, Maybe I will, again, because it gives people options. People that want to watch that can, and the, most of you who don't want to can just skip that video and resume for the landing. The only reason that I wouldn't want to record it is because I kind of feel obligated to commentate, and it's really difficult to sit here and talk about nothing during a you know 30 or 40 minute or an hour glide. You know, I can give updates occasionally to say, okay, yeah, now I'm at 3,000 kilometers off base and so on, but, you know, that gets a little tiresome. But on the other hand, the people that maybe have trouble landing the Delta Glider, they might actually be interested in seeing the whole glide phase just to kind of follow my decision-making process. And it looks like I'm definitely banking the wrong way at this point, so let's go the other way. What I'll basically use as my guide is vertical speed, and I'm going to use a um, an MFD called, I think it's called Reentry MFD, and I'll use that to help me watch my G, uh, G force because coming back into the atmosphere, I think I don't really know what the dynamic pressure top out should be if it should be you know 14 kPa or whatever. So I think a better, uh, maybe a better measurement is the, the G-force. If I can keep the G's under 3, you know, about 3.0 or lower, then, then I kind of consider it a success. You, what you don't want to get into is having a re-entry with, you know, 7 G's or something, at least not sustained. I mean, you'll occasionally hit a bump in the flight where you suddenly spike up to you know three and a half or four g's but you don't want to have any sustained g-force much above three but you know you can see that just how long this is going to take because we're you know gliding down you know even though we're going nine thousand you know, 300 meters a second, so we're still well over orbital velocity, but we've just got so darn far to go. 
We're not even halfway. You know what I should have done? I didn't even think about this. I should have done a reverse. It's probably too late to do that now. Yeah. I'm definitely going to want to go all the way around now. Maybe. Yeah, if I had thought about that, that's definitely what I should have done. Instead of going all the way around, I should have got down into Earth's atmosphere and just turned around and went back to KSC. Ah, that was stupid. I should have thought of that. It might even still be a good idea to do that, but it's hard to say because I'm getting so close to the halfway point now that turning around might not be the best option. I'm going to do it. I'm going to control S here. I'm going to save. And let's do an about face instead of taking... So here in the last couple minutes, I'll show you what I'm thinking. And it doesn't really matter which way we turn. Actually, it kind of does. Actually, yeah, let's turn the other way. We want to turn toward north. So, uh, careful, got to watch that vertical speed, though, because I'm really just barely in the atmosphere here. <laughs> But really, I mean, the challenge is over. I mean, the, all the fuel that I have used has been used. I'm not going to use any more. So the challenge is over. I'm, I'm here at Earth, and all i got to do is land. And that, quite frankly, is the easy part. But the idea here is that I'm just kind of trying to get down a little bit lower, maybe down to about 68 kilometers, and then turn around. I really, really, really should have done this sooner. Because then I could have got back to KSC so much faster. I just assumed that I would go all the way around. But I still think it might be faster to turn around because we're not completely over Australia yet. I'd say if you get to the tip of Australia... Don't waste your time trying to turn around. Just being careful here with my vertical speed. Don't want it to get too low. Okay, we're getting down to about 68 kilometers, so we should have a decent bite on the atmosphere. So let's kind of roll out here. And we could even lock our elevons at this point, probably. Nah, not a good idea. Still requiring a bit too much manual control. Don't really have too much grip on the atmosphere yet either so let me pitch in a little bit more just kind of banking a bit to the left Trying to keep that vertical speed, I, I kind of want to get it back to the zero, or at least even a little below zero. Because now we're climbing out to 69 kilometers, and that's just not enough of a grip on the atmosphere to get any turning. So we might even want to get down to about 65 kilometers, just to get a good, nice, hard turn. You can see a map MFD how our orbit is transforming. Got to watch our velocity as well, because if the velocity gets too low, then we'll have trouble getting back to the base. Okay, that's enough vertical speed. So let me just do this for another second or so, and then I'll end this part of the video, because now I'm at 30 minutes. But you can see if I had thought about this a couple minutes sooner, then we would have been we would have been able to turn around over Africa.
Okay, well you get the idea. Let me pause here, control P, and in this part of the video, I think I will go ahead and record the uh, trip back to KSC. So if you want to watch that, go ahead and check out the next video. If you're not interested, just go ahead and skip the next video, and then you won't have to watch the turn and the glide back to KSC. Uh, if you like the video, if you like this challenge number four, hit the like button. Uh, leave a comment down below. Like I always say, I, I really do love it when you guys leave me comments. It really does make my day. Um, good, bad, whatever. I just like to see what you guys have to say. And subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. There's a link to my Facebook fan page in the uh, description box down below. Be sure to check that because on my Facebook page I can post things that you don't get to see here on YouTube, such as articles, other photos, things along that nature. And I'll see you in the next video.